Represented frequently in folklore across Britain, Ireland, and beyond, the water horse is a creature of large range and ancient origin, with direct cognates found in Greek and Roman myth. But what really are these strange creatures of the rivers, lakes, and sea? Hi, I'm Kevin McLean. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and a big thanks to all my Patreon supporters. Perhaps the first thing that ought to be said about the water horse, the Kevel Dur, the Ech Uske, all referring to the same creature, is that they are most generally thought to be creatures that no person ought to be playing with. They are potentially deadly, believed to kill people by drowning them in bodies of water. Kelpies are also likely to be included in this list, though often they appeared in folk tales as somewhat less deadly than the Ech Uske, being primarily associated with the streams and rivers, but they were dangerous nonetheless. Their particular power is that once a person tries to mount upon their back when they are in the form of a horse, the would-be rider becomes adhered to them, stuck to the horse like a fly upon a fly trap. They are unable to free themselves. Then, with its victim firmly attached, the water horse runs full gallop into the Loch River or sea to drown them beneath the waves. Often they appear as a black horse near the water or emerging out of the water in mist. But they are also powerful shape changers that can take the form of other creatures and even humans. There are many tales of them appearing as handsome young men to seduce a young woman, only to then drown and devour them beneath the waves. They also fool farmers by showing up and serving as laboring animals for a time, before luring the man upon their back after gaining his trust. In some way these tales seem to relate to random drownings and were perhaps a way that people explained what had happened to someone after they found them floating dead in the water. But the water horse is a very ancient concept and features likely in Pictish art but certainly it was very well represented in Romano-British art, likely reflecting an attachment to the representation of this creature by the local population, even at this early time. That virtually the same creature with the same name and characteristics exist in all the insular Celtic languages show that it was a creature with a common conception, at least in Britain and Ireland, during the Iron Age. Yet despite this fearsome reputation recorded in later folklore, was there perhaps an earlier conception of the water horse that was perhaps less inclined to murder? An ancient Roman era personal shrine recovered in Britain may lend us our earliest clue. The shrine, made primarily of tin and likely belonging to a native Briton, shows a god who seems similar in appearance to Roman depictions of Mercury. But this is no simple merchant god. Covering the shrine are many solar symbols, and above the idol of the god is the figure of Sol, the Roman sun god, with his whip. Yet most mysteriously of all is that this solar-aligned Mercury has one foot atop a dolphin and another foot atop a hippocampus, the Roman representation of a water horse. The iconography, however, does not suggest a fearsome figure, but a benevolent one, likely with a bag in hand who comes bearing gifts and perhaps with the light of the sun. Medieval myth speaks much about magical horses that can cross both land and sea. Most famous of these is the horse of Lug Lavad, said to have been obtained from Mananan Maklir, Eanver, meaning the foam of the wave, is able to cross land and sea faster than the cold March wind, something repeated of many horses in later myth and folk tales. But Manannan's horses are elsewhere specifically linked to the waves of the sea, and even the name of the horse itself relates to this. It would seem that only a water horse would possess the ability to cross both land and sea and also be compared to a wave. Gradlon, a legendary king of the Bretons, was likewise said to have a horse that could travel across land and sea and go into the sea. In a Fenian story, a horse of Abertach, 
a son of Lug, transports the entire band of Finn McCool into the other world. In many folktales from Ireland in the 18th and 19th century, some collected by Jeremiah Curtin and others, there are magical talking horses that have the ability to travel across the land and the sea, or leap to amazing heights and fly. They can travel to different lands with their riders on their backs, and even take the form of humans. What all these seem to have in common is that these magical horses have the ability to transport the riders not simply across the ground as a normal horse, but to other worlds. There is thus in them the quality of the shamanic horse similar to Odin's Sleipnir, which can cross any boundary. But are these magical horses that can take people to far off shores of the land of the eternal youth the same as the water horses that are also dreaded, they might be, or at least they might be closely related. In one folktale called Sean MacBreogan and the King of the White Nation, a fine local lord named Breogan finds a young horse near the water at high tide. He raises up the horse for three years and finds it to be a fine steed and brings it to a festival he hosts next summer where horses are raced along the beach likely a Lunasa time festival, though the folktale doesn't specify. He invites all his neighbors to ride on the horse, but they decline, fearing the horse. And though the tale doesn't say so, they likely feared that it was a water horse. Finally, he mounts the horse himself, and the first thing it does is leap into the air and fly off over the sea. But in the tale, this horse does not drown him, but rather takes him to Tirnanog, the land of eternal youth. Yet the land of youth is in some ways the land of the dead, and those who go there hardly ever come back, or if they do, they come back years later. So when Breogan manages to return home via the same horse, he is hardly remembered, for he has been gone for years, and everyone thought he was dead, drowned by the horse. This story indicates that these legendary horses that transport heroes to the other world are at least indistinguishable from the same Ech Ushke that drown people and are probably in origin the same. They are otherworldly beings that are able to transport people between worlds and the boundary of the worlds is most often represented as the water, either moving across the water or indeed going beneath it. This appears to be the same reason why the Romano-British figure of a god stands atop one. He is moving between worlds, something Hermes has the ability to do, perhaps bearing gifts from the land beyond, and the figure of the hippocampus may, to the local worshipper, reflect this transitory ability, just as a horse of Lug or various horses of heroes in folktales, which are said to cross the sea to strange lands. But what happens if the rider fails his otherworldly journey? Perhaps the rider simply drowns. The entire process appears to relate to a journey into the other world, that is, a journey into the land of the spirits, the land of the dead, and the gods. Even when one succeeds in this journey, they might be gone a very long time, so that they are thought to be dead even if they do not die. These spirits were likely not thought to be as malevolent as they are later portrayed to be, but are perhaps even the expression of local spirits of the lakes, rivers, and various coastal waters, and may have played some part in druidic practices regarding otherworldly travel. Spirit walking or projection is sometimes compared to riding a horse, and is thought by some to be the origin of Odin's horse. But perhaps because the water horses resided in the water, and perhaps governed that water, they were ascribed blame for anyone who happened to drown in that water, even more so because they were connected with the idea of carrying people across or beneath it. If someone drowned mysteriously, it might be said that they drowned trying to ride a water horse. And from there, it isn't hard to see how the idea of the terrible, murderous water horse arose. But as a transitional spirit between the world of the living and the other world, they might well have had an association with death from the beginning. 
with transporting souls across the waves. When stories tell of water horses coming in disguise trying to seduce young women in order to drown them, the notion is similar to various stories of the Dinashi. The underlying idea is a little different, a transitory spirit trying to lure one into the other world for them never to return. By the 18th and 19th century, the water horse seems to have become an explanation for drownings or sudden disappearances due to their earlier relation to otherworldly journeys and the realm of the dead. But in origin, the water horse may not have been a terrifying creature that aimed to kill, but a guardian spirit of the waters and perhaps a guide who helped convey druids and filly on meditative excursions into the other world in their quest for wisdom and guidance from the spirits. When they would ride atop the magical horses that would take them over land and sea to the land of Tir Nanog. Or maybe they were always murderous creatures. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and as always, stand tall.